Hey everybody, today's video is predominantly really for unbelievers with this one big question that all of us believers at some point in our life ask ourselves. And that question is, how do I get saved? How do I go to heaven? What must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? And I want to start out today sort of working a little bit backwards. And the first thing I want to say is what you must do is not the question. You don't need to do anything to be saved. Um, I want to start out talking by saying what you don't need to do to be saved. So here's the first one. And if you've heard a lot of uh, likeless religious pitches, you're probably, um, this is going to shock you a little bit. What you don't need to do to get saved is avoid sin and sinless. Now, if you're new to the gospel, I want to be very clear about what I'm not saying. I'm not saying go out and lie, cheat and steal, and break world records for sin. I am not saying that. Sin is bad, and we are called to avoid it. But what I'm telling you, if you're new to this gospel message and you're wondering, how do I get saved? It's very important that you know the answer isn't first you need to stop misbehaving. First you need to avoid whatever that sin is that you're struggling with. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go as far as to say I don't believe someone can fully even come close to avoiding sin until they get saved. It's God that does the changing. And the idea that we're going to change someone to avoid sin without being saved, I just don't think it's reality. So the first thing is this. I do want you to know from the bottom of my heart, you are not going to be saved by avoiding lying, cheating, stealing, committing adultery, um, cheating on your taxes, or whatever it is you're struggling with. And if you're, if you're here for the first time here in the gospel, we all struggle, even Christians, with all kinds of things. Uh, in the Bible, we discover that we all stumble in many ways. So the first thing, again, that I need you to know is that the answer of how we get saved is not avoiding sin. It's not putting money in that uh, plate when it comes by uh, in the local church, okay? It's not getting out there and doing a bunch of good works. All those things are really great, and they're, very, they're, they're normal. It's part of the normal Christian life to do good works, to give where there's a need and help our local church to avoid sin. Those are part of the normal Christian life. But I'm here to tell you, they don't have even this much to do with your salvation. So how do we get saved? Well, here's the news flash. Getting saved is the absolute easiest thing you will ever do. The Bible tells us that we're saved by hearing and believing. So hearing and believing what? Now, I could dumb me this down. At the end of the day, it comes down to this. Do you believe in the identity of Jesus Christ? Yes or no? If you do, and you really, really do, you believe he's the son of God, you're saved. Sealed to the day of redemption. No judgment will ever come your way. But I don't want to just go that quick. I want to, it's hearing and believing what? What are we hearing that we need to believe? So if you would, uh, if you're really someone who's looking to uh, discover how do we get saved, how do we inherit the kingdom, I want to um, share just a short explanation. And it really is not complicated. I promise we're not going to get all crazy religious on you. Some people overcomplicate the most beautiful message in the world, that the God of the universe, the creator of all, would love us. So if you're here... Uh, you probably, I would say God is drawing you. So the Bible tells us this, when the Son of Man is lifted up, this is referring to Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. Everyone. Yep, that includes people like Hitler, liars, murderers, uh, wife beaters. I mean, the worst people you can think of. God loves them too, and he's drawing them. Everyone, all of humanity. In other words, there's something inside of every one of us that knows there's a creator, that knows there's a God. And at some point, we should find ourselves seeking, okay, fine, there's all these gods out there, lowercase g, but which one is real? And I would say, don't make the mistake of saying, well, if everyone has an opinion, then there can't be one. Um, we all have opinions about stuff, and that doesn't negate 
truth from being true. So I would encourage you, if you haven't decided which God is real, if you don't believe the God of the Bible uh, is real in Jesus Christ, then by all means, you should continue your search, or that's a video for another day. Today I'm talking to someone who eh, has heard the word or has read the Bible and just has some thoughts about it and wants to know how they get saved. So here's a quick little story. I want to just rewind everyone back to a story that we heard as kids. Even if we haven't been going to church, uh, we haven't been Christians, we heard this story about this guy named Adam and Eve, right? So we know the story It's in, in school was probably taught or in our Sunday school as kids. We, you know, here it is, the first two adults uh, ever created. There's this apple tree, <laughs> or a fruit tree, and God has one rule, don't eat from it, and they eat from it, sin enters the world, and that's how the story goes. Well, <clears throat> it's interesting, because there, there was a tree, and that tree actually had a name, it's called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Very interesting that God really didn't want them trying to um, get their guidance and get their uh, fulfillment through this knowledge of rules, of behaviorism, right? It's all about perfection. God wanted them to depend on him alone, not a bunch of rules. <clears throat> Again, I have some studies on that that draw a little deeper. So, so what, what that story told us, and we, so what that story told us is they ate from this tree, right? And then before they ate, God said, do not eat of it or you will surely die. Well, guess what happened? We know they continued walking around and talking, and having children, and they continued a life for hundreds of years after they ate from this tree. So did they die, or didn't they die? And here's the answer. What God was, what God was referring to in this garden for Adam and Eve is, if they ate from this tree, they would die spiritually. So what that means, and that's been passed down, is every human being, although we live physically, our problem is that we are spiritually dead to God. And God is trying to save all of humanity. The will of God is that none would perish, not one. So if you're even saying, some people would say, well, well I don't know if God would want to save me. You don't know what I've done. I'm telling you, I don't care what sin you've committed and how many times you've committed it. I don't care if you've been a horrible parent or if you've done the unthinkable. I'm here to tell everyone that God died for the entire world, that whosoever will believe in his son, that God would stand in, the, in their place, pay for their sin to give them life, all right? So I just want to make sure that we know that the gospel is an invitation. The good news from God is an invitation for everybody. So getting back to this, um, Adam and Eve, they eat, they die spiritually, okay? So from that point forward, what they need is not a bunch of rules. And I know we hear this from some TV preachers and, and some church buildings, what they need isn't about, isn't, I got to avoid sin. I got to behave better. No, what they need is spiritual life. They need to be born again. There's a verse in the Bible, Jesus meets this guy named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is some big religious elite guy. And he says, hey, how must I be saved? And ultimately what we discover is Jesus says, he doesn't say you need to, uh, you know, sin less, lie less, cheat a little bit less on your taxes. What you need is to be born again. And he's saying you need a spiritual birth. You need to be spiritually alive in order to enter the kingdom. Yes, we need our sins forgiven, but you not sinning is not going to help you get spiritually uh, reborn again. And God's heart is that we would all become children of God. And that happens when we are spiritually born again. And here's the great thing. Being spiritually born again requires zero outward action on your part. It's inward. It's as simple as this. Believe. Believe what God said his son has done for you and who he is. And that is it. It's not about being dunked in a pool of water. It's not about going to church every Sunday. It's not about sinning less. It's about one thing. It's about believing, right? So Adam and Eve, they die spiritually and immediately skipping all the stuff in the Bible. You don't need to be a theologian to be saved, right? Long story short, we see just sin is just like running rampant in the world. 
Uh, humanity is just all over the place, lying, cheating, stealing. And God has a rescue plan all along. And it's the, it's the most unlikely story that no lifeless religion, and there are plenty of them, would ever dream up this one, right? This, it's so easy that the religious ego cannot handle how Christianity saves us. And here it is, right? It's so easy that here we are, we are the sinners, we're the evil ones, we're the liars, the cheaters, the stealers, the adulterers, and on and on and on. We've all got our own little dirty closet, now don't we? Even us Christians. So we're the ones committing the crime, if you will. And remember, um, all men have sinned. There's not a human being who hasn't sinned. And if God is a just God, if he's a just God, we all would agree that sin must be punished, right? Which in that case, we're all in trouble because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But it gets crazy. So God, the creator of all who created us, he's got an amazing rescue plan. He comes down in the flesh, Jesus, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh. This is, God is Jesus. God says, I'm going to come down in the flesh. I'm going to die for your sins. I'm going to die for the sins of the entire world, and I'm going to be the full payment. I'm going to take all the punishment on myself. This is what Jesus says for Every one of us, no matter how bad our sin is, Jesus says, I'm going to take the punishment for every human being. I'm going to let them spit on me. I'm going to let them nail me to a cross. And my bloodshed will be the full payment for every sin ever committed that's been committed in the past, being committed today, and that will be committed in the future. So we see that, right? Jesus comes. He dies on a cross. But that's where we get forgiven of sins, Right? Whoever, whoever believes this message, right? What God is calling you to do is believe it. Now, look, it's easy to believe. If you just get out there and try hard, God might be okay with you. Just try, 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 maybe. A lot of religions push that message. What separates Christianity from all these lifeless religions of the world is God says, no, no, no. I love you so much that I will stand in your place. You must do nothing but, but believe it. Receive it. I'm giving you this free of charge. I'm giving you life. I'm giving you eternal salvation. All you need to do is believe what I've done for you and receive it. And some people say, no, thank you. I'm not buying. There's no way God would ever do that for us. I reject it. So let me read a couple of verses to you. This is Romans chapter 10, verse 13. He says, everyone who, everyone, that's all of humanity, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we now know that anyone who, Jesus, saved me, it, it, it begins with this. We have to realize and acknowledge, I believe I've got a problem with sin. I believe I have fallen short of God's holy and perfect standard, that I'm not perfect. And this is all of us, by the way. There's no one who's not. I don't care if, you have a, if we're just looking with lust. We all have some type of sin, especially during our entire life that needs to be paid for. So we have to acknowledge it first. And then we say, I need to be saved. Well, saved from what? Saved from, you know, we need to be forgiven from our sins. And once we're forgiven from our sins, immediately upon believing, the most important thing that we need is life. And God says that I'll get, I've come to give you life. I didn't come here to judge the world. Jesus came to save the world. He came to give us life freely with zero human effort. Ephesians 2, 9 tells, uh, 2, chapter 2, verses 8 through 9 says, for it's by grace you've been saved. I want to do this slowly. It's by grace you've been saved. So that word grace, it's God's grace, his kindness, his goodness. In other words, you're not going to be pounding your chest. It's by God's kindness that you've been saved. How? Next line says, through faith, faith, yeah, believing in the identity of Jesus Christ coming to die for your sins on a cross and being resurrected, which shows he can overcome death. And the Bible says, even though you die, you will still live. Christians may die physically, but we will live eternally, spiritually. And we won't be like some angels on a puffy cloud. We're going to be very much like we are now. You're, going to have, you're still going to have your personality, only we won't have the struggle with sin anymore with a new body. It says, 
<clears throat> you've been saved by grace through faith, and it is not of yourselves. What we're learning there, it's not about you not sinning and you not lying and cheating and you being all perfect and awesome and pounding our chest. Look at me, I'm so great. It is not of yourself. Get over yourself, everyone. There's nothing you can do, no matter how hard you try, to save yourself. It continues, it says, it is a gift of God. It is freely given to you from the heart of God. It says, I am giving you life. I require nothing of you in terms of outward performance doing. God is saying, take it. How do you take it? By believing. He's saying, just believe. That's his whole message. He says, it's a gift from God, not by work. So that part is saying, not by human effort and awesome behavior, so that no one can boast. I love that. God has, got a bit, God has got a chip on his shoulder, I think, with some people. Like, no, you're not going to get to take credit. My son died. I died on a cross for you. I made the entire payment. I required nothing of you in terms of paying for that sin. I'm giving you all the life. And the only thing that is required of you is that you receive it. Say, I believe it. I believe it. I believe, God, you died. I believe Jesus died on a cross for my sins and was resurrected. And he's given me life. Give me the life. I'm calling on Jesus to save me and give me eternal life. That's it. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world. How many places? Is that, is that everyone? Yeah, every human being that he gave his only son, sent him to a cross, nailed to a cross, blood dripping down his arms and his feet to die and pay for our sins. So that whoever, who? Whoever, anybody, no matter what your struggles are, whoever believes in him, so that's what you need to do, believe. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So I'll give you one more too. Um, it comes from Galatians, and I'm gonna break it down. It sounds complex, but it's not. It's Galatians 2.21. He says, I do not set aside the grace of God. In other words, I don't set aside the goodness of God the kindness, the amazing like adoration that God has for us. I will not set it aside because if righteousness, if your perfection, if your salvation, if your eternal, uh, eternal uh, salvation with God, if it could be obtained through law, what does he mean by that? There was an old covenant Jewish law system where the Jews had to try to get right with God by keeping 16, uh, 613 laws. Thou shalt not do this. You better do this. You got to do that. You better not do that. Well, what we'd later discover is if righteousness could be obtained through your effort, through the law, through not sinning, through outward performance, through human exertion, it goes on to say, then Christ died for nothing. Paul's like, what a joke. If we could be saved by doing anything through our own selves, not sinning and trying and working for it, then God is a fool to let his son die on a cross. And he sent him to a cross for nothing. And the reality is that's, that's the gospel message, but is that we are saved by a God that says, I love you. I will take all the punishment for your sins. I will come in flesh. I will come to a lower level in the flesh. I will be, there must be a payment for sin. Sin is going to be paid for. And God actually died for all the sin of the world. So all sin is dealt with. It is, Jesus took it all. Are we all saved? No. We need something. Remember how we start, we need life. We are, we are born spiritually dead. And God is saying, I'm coming to give you life. You have one role. It isn't stop sinning. It's believe, believe in Jesus and God promises you. He says, I will put my spirit in you. I will give you a new heart. I will give you new desires. God is saying, I'll do it all. All you need to do is believe. And God's like, I will do the rest. Don't overthink salvation. It's not a bunch of rules. It's not something you do first and then get saved. God is saying, nope, you're putting the cart before the horse. All I'm calling you to do, as God would say, is believe that I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross 
and you believe that he saved you from all your sins, that he has the power and the authority to die for your sins and to be resurrected to give you life, just like he got new life, that he was raised again, raised from the dead in the same way we're raised from the dead. We're spiritually dead. Now we're spiritually alive. And I love that. God is saying, and that's it. That's all I'm asking from you to do. And then I'll, if you, I'll do the changing. I'm not, so I'm not going to talk to anyone here today and say, so first you need to change. Whatever your sin is, you got a drug problem, you better quit doing those drugs first. Oh, you got a drinking problem, you need to stop drinking. You need Whatever your sin is, insert it. I'm not telling you to stop doing that. I don't want you to do it. I certainly think it's a good idea to avoid it, whether we're Christians or not. Nothing good ever comes out of that kind of behavior. Um, there, there are earthly consequences. I think we can all agree to that, whether we're Christians or not. There are earthly consequences. But God is saying, hey, I, I, let me do the changing. All I really, really am worried about today is that you would believe in my son. It's free. It's open to every human being that has ever walked the planet. And you will never find a dead, lifeless religion that would ever come up with a message so easy. What? I don't have to do? So all we hear is do. You got to do more, be more, try more. That's not the gospel of Christianity. God is that good. Hope that helps you guys. That's how you get saved. God bless you all.